Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to World of Warships. And today, revisiting our new player guide series, I thought it'd probably be helpful to go over settings. The Wargaming kind of revamped this. I think it was, I don't know if it was the beginning of update 12.6 or 12.5, um, but um, it'd be good for us just to go over, especially if you're a new player. Um, and wanting uh, thoughts on these different categories. So I will timestamp the, uh, these items here, display, graphics, audio, uh, heads up display, camera, mouse, controls, keyboard, and other, all down below if you want to skip to a certain section. Um, and then maybe I just share some things I do that helps me out um, here in the settings, but there's not too much that I in particularly do. Now, um, it is important to note that typically you will find these by default keys. So if you're uncertain on something, uh, you've m messed with something and you wish to uh, change it back, uh, you can simply select uh, by default uh, and apply. And if you do change something, you can just close. Uh, you have changed some settings, apply changes, you can just say no, right? And then you go right back into port. But here on my EU server account, we're gonna look through some of these things. So I'm just giving you some common information regarding the, your display. So it's letting me know, it's my generic monitor, <laughs> uh, my ASUS monitor that it's showing. Uh, I can select between uh, screen modes. Uh, so I can have a, a full screen, I can have a windowed. Um, I like the full screen windowed and then I just simply click the windows key when I want my uh, taskbar to pop up on the bottom. Uh, the system the effects on the graphics card uh, is saying screen size of pixels is high. The effects on the processor is low in terms of resolution. Um, I think my, I had to go through, I have all my st st statistics or detailed um, specs on my PC in the description below if you're curious to see what I'm running as this PC's uh, about three years old. Uh, you can also see the UI scale. Uh, if you want to change uh, the sizes uh, of that, I just keep mine at the 100%. And then you have <coughs> gamma. Um, gamma is setting display of light and dark shades and affects image contrast. Um, so they're giving you that information here. I've always left mine on one. I've never messed with it, as you can kind of see how uh, it's altering a little bit, um, but for me, the one has been fine. Vertical synchronization. Um, so the icon that pops up here is synchronizing frame rate with monitor refresh rate, turn on to avoid disruption. Effects on graphic cards, medium. Effect on processor, low. I just have it off. Um, if you feel comfortable with putting, I guess, maybe it's a little more of a load on your graphics card uh, and processor, you can do that for myself. Yeah, it doesn't affect how I play the game. They also have special features, like they have a color blindness filter um, and adjusts the image to accommodate color vision impairment. So you can go in, you can set this up. Um, now you can see right now it's disabled um, and I can click some different options here, uh, depending on, I don't think I'm gonna pronounce these uh, names correctly, but I can adjust the intensity uh, of these different things if you do have um, some type of color blindness. Uh, so Wargaming has uh, done some things in here um, that will help you out. For myself, I don't need it, I'm okay. Um, so that is everything you need by display. Now graphics, uh, you have an auto configuration. So select the most suitable graphics uh, settings for your computer. I don't know if this would actually change anything. Let's see, um, I can, uh, I guess I can say yes. And that's maybe changed some things. Let's see, so hi, those two are on. Okay, apparently it's not gonna give me the option to, uh, I can maybe go back in here, auto config. Um, so anyhow, so if you wanted to do that, you could. I've done it, not entirely sure what all it may or may not have changed. I'm probably gonna adjust some things here for myself, honestly, as we go through this. So we can have graphics quality. Um, so as you see here, the overall image quality, if your computer is experiencing poor performance, is recommended to use the minimum value. Uh, so I can have um, a custom all the way up from very low to maximum. Right now we have a very high. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty comfortable with uh, this being run on my uh, PC. 
In terms of the common sets, you have texture quality, so you can adjust that uh, accordingly uh, to what you feel is best. You have texture filtering. Um, here you can see that it has low effects on your graphics card and processor, at least according to this. Um, so we have this option, which looks like it's probably about the best. Um, and so I'm like, yeah, if they have that additional texturing, that's fine. Uh, here we have the AMD FSR 1.0. Image scanning technology allows you to increase performance with minimal loss of image quality. Recommended for use uh, with any type of anti uh, aliasing. Not entirely sure if I said that word right. But you can see here it has a high effects on the graphics card and a low effects on the processor. Um, because I don't even understand this, <laughs> we're just going to leave it off. Uh, so I'm not going to say I'm a computer expert and I will know 100% everything we go through here, but in general, we'll just go through it, so that's just off. Game browser hardware acceleration, game browser um, parameter change will be applied after restarting the game. The graphics card is utilized instead of the CPU, your central processing unit, uh, to window in game web pages such as the armory, clan section, disable if you experience any display problems. Uh, effects on graphics card low, effects on processor. So if you're having some display problems, maybe this is something you need to have disabled um, on your game. We can also reduce the GUI uh, refresh rate. Um, this, the interface elements, uh, this is icon tabs, notifications uh, are updated less frequently. It reduces the CPU load. Now, as I said, I'm no computer specialist and uh, this acronym is completely spacing my mind right now. The graphical and user interface. There we go. We learn together. That's why we do these new player guide videos. Um, it's a graphics based operating system interfaces that uses icon menus and mouse to click on the icon or pull down the menus to manage interaction with the system. That's kind of the definition they give to it here. Um, and it's not too uh, far off from what's on here. Um, so um, apparently if we want to reduce that, uh, it will reduce our CPU load, deciding if that's worth chasing or not. Hmm. Guess it's really up to you. If you're wanting to reduce the CPU load, you, load, uh, you can turn that off. And if you want to increase your graphics girl user interface, you can do that as well. It's a semi-transparent backgrounds are a substitute with a solid fill. Uh, effects on graphic card medium, effect on processor medium. No, we can just leave those off. And I'm almost tempted to just turn this on, but um, I've never had any issues with the game in the three years I'm playing on this PC, almost three years playing on this game on my PC, so we'll just leave that as is. Uh, and then you have anti aliasing I'm sure I'm spelling that incorrectly, and we're gonna look up this definition as well. This is a technique used uh, in computer graphics to remove the aliasing. Uh, al oh, sorry, it's by alias al aliasing effect. The aliasing effect is the appearance of jagged edges or jaggies, quote unquote, in a rast rasterized image, an image rendered using pixels. Um, so basically, you're not getting jagged or like sharp corners and edges. It's smoothing things out, um, is what it does. So <laughs> you're on your MSAA, like I know what that stands for. It's a type of image anti, um, I wanted to say the A, I'm just gonna call it AA, that produce, processes more pixels at the edges of 3D objects, provides better image quality at the edges of objects. Now I'm like, this probably definitely has a high effect on a graphics card, which it does. An effect on your processor is low, so definitely just gonna leave that bad boy off. Now your FXAA, type of image AA during the post-processing stage removes residual noise. FX on graphics card low, FX on processor low. Um, so I think that's fine to leave as is if it's gonna have a low impact. Um, TXAA, type of anti, or type of image AA that uses information from previously rendered frames reduces overall noise level. As a medium effects on your graphics card and a low effects on your processor. So uh, that's probably fine to leave as is. Leave that on. I don't like noise um, visually, so, and there's a lot of things here. In game world objects uh, see rendering quality. Uh, so this is quality and detail of rendering for water surfaces and effects. This is a very high 
FX on the graphics card and a medium effects on the processor. Um, and honestly, I'm wondering if I can just turn this to high. I don't know if I need to have this very high. Um, for I'm wondering for water surfaces and effects. I might turn this to high just to experiment with it and see. Um, but it seems like it still leaves a pretty high effect on the graphics card. I mean, it's not maximum, so maybe we leave it. Uh, Fully inch rendering quality, quality of detail, vegetation rendering. I don't really care about that. We can turn that down. And if it changes, I'll, if I notice changes in the game after I've made these changes, I'll let you know and I'll post them in the comments below uh, after this video goes up. Uh, draw distance sets the maximum distance of detailed object rendering. Effects on graphics card high, effect on processor low. Um, draw distance. Detailed object rendering. Probably gonna leave that on high in case if we're looking at ships further off in the distance. Object LOD, it's this this determines number of displayed objects in the rendering. Um, medium graphics uh, card effect and a low effect on the processor. So just leave that on high. Reflections, this has been bugging me a little bit. So quality of objects reflection rendering on the water surface. This has a high effect on a graphics card and effect on the processor uh, medium. They've changed something with how the sunlight reflects on the water. And it's been super annoying to me because it's almost like blurred. Like you can't even make out necessarily what's there beside that's where the sunlight in the map is hitting the water. So I'm just gonna turn that down to high because um, I'm not really too concerned about that. Additional reflections, um, SSR. Additional enhancement reflections on the water surface. Uh, we just It's just that medium and that's honestly fine because I don't really care too much. Even the war game is working on putting more, uh, I think we're gonna have like whales and stuff. Uh, shark, um, yeah, whales and stuff in the game soon in an upcoming update. Uh, effects, uh, effects details. So parameter change will be applied after restarting the game. Detail visual effects rendering has a medium effect on the processor and graphics card we have on high. Effects quality, uh, quality of the visual effects display, shadow rendering quality. Um, you know, I don't actually know if I really care that much about shadow rendering quality. I mean, it is nice in the one extent because like shadows mountains, shadows a ship. So maybe I leave that on high. Uh, dynamic lighting, lighting quality from different sources and like also very interesting. Uh, I'm probably thinking the map, like, um, was there a map called, is this Northern Lights? Or is it Northern Waters? Where you have the Aurora, that's actually pretty cool to see, so I, I would hate to uh, affect that. Post-processing, detailed rendering, uh, and number of post effects, it's very high. Okay, animate small objects, has a medium effects on your graphics card and processor. Reduced fire and flooding effects. Effects of fire and flooding become less pronounced, reduces graphics card workload. Yeah, I'm totally fine with that being off. Um, yeah, and fog transparency. Distant objects are depicted with a hazy effect resulting in a reduced level of clarity. Fog transparency. So we can turn fog transparency down. Huh, I don't know. I'm like, is this mean the higher you have this, um, the diff more difficult it is to see in the fog, but it's fog transparency. So I guess we'll leave that at 100. So I'll just make those uh, applied changes. Um, I'll try not to take as long in going through every single thing. Some things are gonna just make sense just coming in here and looking at them yourself. So with audio common, uh, general game volume, I don't leave this at 100% uh, or at 100. I actually, I turn them down and even probably when I go to post edit this video, I have to turn this down a little bit because um, I don't like having my ears blared out because sometimes I even listen to some music uh, through Spotify in the background. So I myself, I always come down in here and I just turn down because otherwise it's just too much. Uh, your audio source, you can just choose, you know, speakers, headphones, whatever you can. I just manually change out if I'm going to listen to the speakers on my desk or I'm using my uh, headphones. Sound quality, uh, we can have from low, high, ultra. We have high, that's totally fine. I don't really care to hear the seagulls that much more crisply, uh, more crisp uh, sound like. Uh, music, this is one I'm constantly playing with. Uh, when I'm listening, for example, um, well, let me start with the volume and port. Um, I don't care to 
let's say like right now I'm in port, so the volume's going up. Um, but we, I tend to run that pretty low because I don't really care to have a lot of high volume in port. But my volume in battle, if usually when I'm recording purposely a YouTube video um, or a live commentary in mind, I try to have the volume uh, up of the music in battle. But when I'm listening to Spotify and stuff, I just bring it down lower. So um, if you like listening, you know, I listen to um, some Hans Zimmer, I listen to Spirits of the Caribbean, uh, I listen to some Sabaton, um, some remix vibes I have. Um, and so I like turning my volume down in battle. So that just makes me enjoy the game that much more. And you can even change the type of music in battle um, you have. You can have standard, cinematic, modern, or war drums. Um, I haven't really messed around with this too much, but I just leave it on standard because I don't really pay t that much attention to the music in battle. And most of you guys, when you're watching YouTube videos, you're going to be more familiar with that type of music because um, hardly anyone ever changes that. Effects, you have a sound preset. Uh, here you can see it's giving you several different options and it's explaining uh, what those different options do, uh, whether it be standard, cinematic, simple, night, or custom. Uh, myself, I don't care too much. Um, Standard is uh, just kind of set by default. I might be interested in trying out something like cinematic, uh, honestly. Um, effects are pushed to the front and sound louder. The in-battle audio pattern is most vivid and saturated. So, I don't know. That might be interesting to try out. We'll try it out. Ship horns, you can turn those off and on. If you don't know, you can just simply press your in key and you can have um, your horns in battle unless you've uh, changed your control key, which we'll talk about here shortly. Uh, voiceover volume, so you know when you're starting off the battle and it's like battle start and all that, sometimes it's just a little too loud for me, so I've come in here and I've dropped it down. Um, I like having it lower. This is also the place where you find your voiceover in different languages, so I just have standard English. <laughs> you can have English uh, United Kingdom or English Pirates. That's a bit interesting. Um, and then you have uh, other supported languages uh, in here as well for your voiceovers. Modification, uh, so you can also um, adjust that here as well. So we have National Extended Azurlane Azuma Statue of Liberty. Um, so commanders on your team speak in the selected voiceover language when using a commander with unique phrases, the same voiceover will be replaced. Now, I would, th you, if you're more a veteran player and you're watching this video, um, these are the only additional commanders I have. If I was on my NA, this would be a really long list and we'd be going through a lot more people, a lot more Azerlene, um, Bad Cap, um, and many others. Um, but that's the only one I have, so you can s specifically choose one uh, there as well if you wish. Quick commands, um, quick commands voiceover. So that's like if you hold the B key and then you get that panel that's like um, uh, set a smoke screen, uh, focus this enemy, whatever. You hold the B key and then you just select that option. Um, you also, uh, and that has the voiceover, right? So if you don't want to ha hear the voice when you do that, you can just simply um, have that turned off. Radio commu communication effect. So sound filters implement to replicate the effect of radio communications. The effect is applied to commander phrases, quick commands, and voice chat. So probably it's like some sort of sound distortion, I'm going to assume, uh, when you're doing that. And that's just something I don't really care to have, so it's off. Communication, voice chat, um, I have off. As does you exchange voice messages with players in division, when to activate, you press the V key. I don't, if I'm going to talk with someone, I just use Discord, um, so I don't deal with it because it's also pretty crap in general from my understanding. Now your heads up display, uh, again you have access to just a default key. Uh, you can change your crosshair by the shape. So I have static 2, uh, which I think static 2 is technically the default. Um, so that's been fine with me. Uh, you can come in here and you've probably seen some uh, word of worship uh, other content creators, Twitch streamers, who use maybe some uh, more of these interesting ones. Uh, I know I've seen this one, I've seen that one. Um, so they have all these different types of numbers. I've seen this one as well. Um, I don't really care that much. I just go with this. This is what most people run, and I don't necessarily uh, 
need the others to have in general a good idea. If there was one I wanted to try out, it'd probably be more like um, probably this one here, just because the angles, you know, when a ship's kiting and turning away. Oop, back. But we're going to leave it on that. Um, da, 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 interface. So um, the interface is, as you're seeing here on the screen, um, if you want to disable the detailed interface, you press and hold the uh, left alt key. Changing interface between uh, views uh, alters the amount of information shown regarding allied enemy ships in the interface. When I was doing the Jaeger player review, I couldn't remember when I was in the replay because um, I was watching the UALS replay, giving live commentary on it. Um, I forgot it was that left alt key because I couldn't see the names of ships. Um, so you can toggle this uh, off and on by pressing uh, the left alt key. And I like having that information up. As you can see, I have that as full, not something like simple or just adaptive. Team lineups, I have that on. So I'm seeing list of ships on the side. So you can toggle that off and on. Performance, uh, display frame rate, and server response time. Actually, I like having that on. Um, I think I used to have it on, but then I recently uninstalled World of Warships and I reinstalled it. Um, and I think I went back to a default setting. So I do actually like to see that uh, up in the top left of the screen. Battle chat, a display window for communicating with other players during battle. You may notice sometimes you'll be watching content, uh, other World of Warship content creators, Twitch, uh, streamers, whatever, and you see that their battle chat's disabled. Um, that's where they can come in and see that. Um, and they just turn it off. Um, I've never turned mine off. I like leaving it up because I like try to use that to communicate with team. But if you know if chat's really annoying you, and driving you crazy, and you're just like screw it, I want to have it off. You can do that here. Indicators. Um, you can have you hit indicators of hitting terrain. So that's like this. Um, you can see it's the two mountains, the two triangles there. So you can have that on and off, or when locked on target. Separate armament reloading. Oh, separate armament reloading, excuse me. Uh, simultaneously displays reloaded in carriers for all main battery turrets, tubes, and the airstrike armament. So that's those, as you can see, in the highlighted in the green. It gives you a detailed status of when are those guns going to reload, when are those torpedoes going to reload. I really like having this, and it's a default setup, uh, so it's nice to have. You have timers for modifiers. Display time left until the end of modifier effects. So if you would have a modifier and you want to see that on, uh, you can do that here as well. Um, but I just have mine off. So we're going to go ahead and uh, apply our changes there. Camera, this is something Wargaming did a couple updates ago, uh, maybe five updates ago even, where they changed the camera position where you couldn't really get close to the default view. So you can change your camera height and field of view height. Um, this is on EU. And it's not exactly what I have my NA set up, so don't take this as this is what I run, because I think I need to mess with this one a little bit more to get closer to my NA one. Um, but your field of view, uh, so this is the viewing angle in combat. Um, this setting does not affect the binocular view, so that's just like how much can you see around your ship from left to right. You can zoom out, more zoom in, we have a less field of view or a larger field of view. Your camera height is basically how high above your ship that you are. Um, and I don't want to be like right up on my ship, so that's why I think on here I have it as six. Uh, but you can alter it, you can mess with it even in battle. You can hit escape settings, come into camera, and then mess with the camera position. You can even do a training battle if you wanted to, or co op battles if you want to mess with it a little bit. Camera behavior in battle track the locked target. We want it to do that. Automatically switch camera between main guns and torpedo launchers. Yes, we want to automatically do that. We store the camera position when exiting free look mode. Uh, yes, I want to have that. Enable camera feedback when damage is taken. Um, sometimes I don't care too much to have this, but if I'm zoomed in, uh, binocular view, and I take a hit, then I just like to know I've been hit, how much damage did I hit, uh, take, and then I can kind of assess, oh, do I need to use a DCP, do I need to use a repair party, uh, so on and so forth. Now your mouse, you can actually adjust your mouse sensitivity here. Now, I have a Razer mouse, and I can adjust my sensitivity on the fly. Like, this is kind of my normal. And then I can make it, like, really crazy, like, super duper sensitive. Uh, and then, so this is my normal, and then I can have it, like, really low, where it's so hard to move. 
Um, so I can do that on the fly, but if you want to adjust your mount sensitivity, you can do that here in the game as well. As well as your sc scroll wheel response uh, when you're maybe zooming in and out on a gun or your ship. You can also turn on an invert Y axis. Moving the mouse closer to you causes the field of view to move up, while moving the mouse away from you causes the field of uh, view to move down. Uh, so for now, you know, when I'm, mo I'm moving my mouse up, I, this is going up, you know, if I do that, uh, which I haven't applied the change. But when I go up, mouse goes up. When I go down, mouse goes down. So you can invert that if you so desire. Now controls, keyboard, I'm not gonna go everything here. Basically you can uh, switch between ships, uh, your aircraft, um, communication and battle observation uh, controls, uh, how you want to see what's happening uh, in game uh, with your controls. So in terms of movement, you've, you know, your typical W, S, A, D, right? Uh, hold to turn to port, Q. Hold to turn to starboard, E. Uh, so basically you can just tap uh, Q and you're gonna have a quarter turn to, or half turn to port, or you can do a full turn to port if you click Q twice. So if you don't wanna constantly keep clicking your A and D key, uh, I often just use the Q and E key. Um, it's just a lot less key tapping, pressing and holding. And then I usually can, will take more of a control over the AD key if I'm like in the heat of battle and I wanna have full control versus just using the Q and E. Uh, armament wise, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. You have all these things here. I should note, you can also set up alternative keys, which I'm gonna do here in just a minute for a few of these things. But if you're kind of wondering, you know, how do you track a shell, torpedo after firing? Well, for me, I just click the mouse key. This is a default uh, key setting. Um, that I can do. X locks target. If you want to lock your guns, you hold, go shift uh, plus X at the same time. Lock guns relative to hull, control X. Um, this is something here. Uh, select priority A sector, which is your O key. Uh, I like to use on my razor mouse key uh, M4. Um, so all that to do is uh, on the fly, I because your left hand, if you play with your right hand on the mouse, left hand on the keyboard, uh, the O key, basically I have to move my left hand over, hit the O key, or let go of my mouse and hit the O key, which is how I used to play. Um, but if I want to select priority, um, I just use the my M4, which is kind of like I have a trigger forward and a trigger backwards. So I just simply raise up my, I face the direction I want to select, focus my priority in AA, and I hit that M4 key. Much easier, I hardly rarely ever use um, the O key anymore. Same with the, uh, P key, this is disabling your AA and secondaries. And so if you're wondering how to do that, you press P. If you're wondering why you would ever do that, it's if you're a destroyer, you don't want to be detected by an enemy aircraft flying nearby. Um, pretty much every battle I start with a destroyer, I turn my AA off. Some destroyers, your AA is the same as your AA detectability range, so it doesn't even matter. But I also, I use another key for this, and uh, that is my M5 key, which is right in front of my M4 key. I'm just up a little bit. Uh, so sometimes I like to have that there. Uh, and then here you can see some other options, which I don't necessarily mess with. Consumables, like your ship horn, you know, if you want to have a quicker access. Like I have another trigger key uh, I could use uh, for ship horn if I wanted to, but I don't want to mess with it. Submarines, um, how you control them. Your camera, you want to mess with things there. Your heads up display. Um, so how you see your full interface mode, uh, show height interface, uh, control J. So some of you have asked before, uh, how do you do that? Now this is something actually pretty interesting that I might actually try out here. Sometimes um, kind of only the Unicums, as sweaty Unicums do this. Uh, I know some people um, otherwise might do this, but um, for example, Maltese Knight. He'll be playing and you see him flicker between uh, showing and hiding his interface. And he's doing this basically, but he's probably has a hotkey attached. Um, and this is something that I like to, and the reason you do this in the battle is if you're trying to avoid an incoming salvo and you can't quite see where those bat those Yamato shells are gonna land. Well, sometimes you can find kind of little windows of opportunity to position your ship into if you are able to feel it right. Uh, if you see how the shells are going to land. Um, so then simply clicking Control J to see that, oh, that's where the shells are landing, um, and then address your ship accordingly with your um, WSAD keys, right? 
So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to put my, um, well, it's um, not activating. <laughs> I was going to try to use another M key on my mouse, but uh, it's not connecting for some reason. Uh, and now I've just messed that up. Uh, no, that's not what we want to do. Uh, we'll, we'll do, uh, okay, it's fine. We'll just do that for now. Now I have to come back up and fix, uh, undo what I've done. Uh, yeah, fire. <laughs> so that's something you got to be mindful of. Um, keys are set to next ally attack. So in fear of that, I may have messed something up. I'm just going to select by default and then I'm going to come down and I'll just simply um, do what I just showed you a moment ago. So I'm going to have to think on the key then because I thought I was going to be able to use this other M key uh, on my mouse, but uh, apparently not. I'll have to see what I want to use uh, for that. Game statistics, that's the tab, right? A lot of people use tab. Help screen, F1, ship status, H. If you hit uh, hold H, uh, you have a tab appears on the left side of your screen. Tactical map and mini map. Uh, you can open the tactical map by pressing M. That's the will go up over the battle and you'll see what's happening in real time. If you want to zoom uh, in or zoom out with your mini map, it's you know your mini map here in the corner. Uh, you simply can just press uh, the plus or minus key. So that's how I adjust mine. Um, or you can use, uh, apparently they have the number key uh, plus or number key minus as secondaries. So that's fine. Uh, aircraft, uh, basically same thing, just how you want to adjust if you want to do anything here. Um, apparently I also need to click attack. Did it undo something that I was doing earlier? It not look like it. This is a little strange how I have that. Keys reset to next ally. That's still there. Hmm. It's a little strange. So I'm not, I don't know what I've done there. But regardless, we'll do that for now. So aircraft, same thing. You will go through and make certain settings. Uh, you can do that here. Uh, communication, you know, chat, quick commands. Uh, so you can actually utilize your F keys uh, for the quick commands as well. Uh, I know some people utilize this. I never do. I just like pressing, holding the B key, uh, which opens the quick commands panel and then selecting with my mouse, whatever option I'm wanting to select. But that's where it is. And then if you want to accept, decline, an invitation to join a division in game, it's K or L, but at the same time, you can just uh, choose on screen. Battle observation. If you're wondering how to work, um, I probably need to make an own, um, I needed to do an own video on this because this one's going to get drowned out by just talking about settings in general. Uh, if you open up it for your World of Warships client, in your like for my myself it's on my gaming D uh, I go into my games World of Warships in A then there's a folder and it says replays open replays I can watch the last 20 plus uh, battles I've had and I can simply utilize uh, these keys uh, when I'm uh, watching so uh, for example if you hold uh, I don't see it here even on your own ship it should be control right control right shift backspace and that will break your camera being locked onto your ship um, and then you can move around the map freely and then if you want to go back to your ship I think you just click shift it'll, it'll take you to whatever ships are around um, and then you can of course do away with the um, interface by control plus right control plus J um, but okay this is what it is to next ally that's what it meant uh, can I just choose defaults what was it yeah, the left mouse key. That's what it was, but I wasn't sure what the heck was going on there. Um, and then to previous allies, so if you want to select between your different allies, maybe after you're dead, that's what that was meaning. It's just very interesting wording. 
move to object in the screen center space. So if you're looking at a ship and then you press space, it'll basically zoom in, take you to where that, sh that ship is and your camera will be locked to it and change camera mode to course shift. So we'll apply those changes. Other, these are just additional settings. So collision avoidance system, I have off. So if, you're, if you have this on, your ship will automatically change its course if there's an object in her way, uh, an obstacle in her way. Sometimes I want to intentionally not sir. Not sir means basically grounding. Um, I want to intentionally do that. So I turn the system off and there you go. You can see the time in port. So I could turn that on and they'll show me if I'm losing track of time, I can have it in. Uh, I'll leave it on and then we'll see where it's at when we come back into the game or the port. Skip video at game launch. If you don't want to see that video when you've launched the game, you can simply turn that off. Um, or, sorry, turn that on. Turn it on here, turning off so you don't see that video at game launch. You just skip it. And you can also display a language bar uh, when hovering over a text field. So we'll apply that. We'll come back in and we'll, let's find out where the time is. I think it's just supposed to be here. What happens if I go back in and I shut it off? It's not there. So I actually like seeing the time in port. I think I had this as an old setting before I uh, uninstalled and reinstalled World of Warships. Oops, not that one. Um, so I like to see the time in port. That's helpful for me. So uh, with that being all said and done, I hope you appreciated me going over the settings. This has gone into almost a 37 minute video, but there'll be timestamps at the bottom. Simply click to wherever you're interested in seeing at here in this video. And hopefully that's helpful to you who are newer players or those of you who may have been playing the game for a while and you never messed and really went in and looked at these different settings and what you have. Um, so you can do that. You can mess around with it. It's kind of fun to just come in here and see uh, set up the game more in a way that you're going to enjoy and feel like you're going to benefit more information from in the heat of battle. So if you liked today's video, give a thumbs up. If you didn't, give a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you're subscribed, thanks so much. I would really appreciate it, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.